welcome and thank you for joining us today for APA Demystified. We are your presenters. I am Holly Hewitschmidt. I'm one of your librarians at Webster University. And I'm Carolyn Brown. I'm the Assistant Director of the Academic Resource Center at Webster University. Today we want to talk about citation and why we cite. There's really three important reasons. One is the practice of scholarly communication. Even if you're just writing a paper for class where you're doing research, you're entering this academic conversation in the middle where you've done some research and you've heard what some people have to say, and then you're forming your own statement on the topic. So you want to be able to have people be able to trace this conversation. Where did you get your background information? And then they can build on it going forward. There are ethical reasons why you would want to cite. You are using the words, the ideas, the creativity of somebody else. And ethically, you need to give them credit for it. So you want to cite to, to let people know that you've done an amazing amount of research and this is what you found, but that what you found was actually created by someone else and you are incorporating it into your argument or your research. And then just the practical reasons. If a reader of your paper wants to see where you got that information. Perhaps they are doing some research and want to follow up on some of the sources or a professor wants to verify that you understood something properly. They may want to go back to one of your sources. And so for practical reasons, you want to give them the ability to do that. Now there are citation generators out there on the internet, freely available. Um, but you need to be careful of them. They don't tend to do a very good job and you are responsible for what you turn in. It's not acceptable to say, well, this is what EasyBib gave me, professor. So how, you know, if you question it, that's my excuse. That's not an excuse. APA has a manual that lists all of the rules um, and, and you need to follow those rules. And if you are going to, so it's best to just avoid those citation generators because they are not very accurate. You may find if you're doing research through the library that the databases offer a citation feature and they can be problematic too. In this case, this example that I've circled, there is a problem with the APA citation. The capitalization is not correct in the title of the article the horror, the horror, um, the H in horror in both cases should be lowercase. APA has their own funky capitalization rule. Um, so this is something that is very easy to fix if you want to copy and paste this into a paper where you're keeping track of your citations. But if you turn it in as is, it is incorrect and that is your responsibility. So with APA citation, you do want to refer to the manual. You want to refer to some resources we're going to suggest that you take a look at. And you can refer to your friends in the library and in the writing center for help. What you're going to find, APA is the American Psychological Association. And this association has created the citation style so that there's consistency in what it publishes. And a lot of other fields have adopted this citation style. When you cite, you cite in two places. You want to cite in the reference list with a full citation. So at the end of the paper, all of the details about that article or that book or that website so that someone can get back to it. But in the text, as you're writing or as your reader is reading, if you quote somebody, you want to acknowledge that you're using someone else's words. So at the end of that quotation, you want to use an in-text citation, 
a brief note. If you are paraphrasing someone at the end of every sentence where you paraphrase, you want to include the in-text citation. So somebody knows you're using someone else's ideas. And then this way you are both being ethical and responsible as a researcher. Both forms of citation are required in all documents. And we are talking about the new edition of APA, the seventh edition that came out in the fall of 2019. And if you are familiar with earlier versions of APA, there were a few changes to this version. Um, you use only one space after a period at the end of a sentence. For those of us who are a little older and learn to type on a typewriter, this is really hard to um, to correct ourselves on, but that is the appropriate spacing. Um, the publisher, you no longer need a city of publication when you're citing a book. You just put the publisher down because so many publishers now are international entities. And then the in-text citation for works with three or more authors, you can now shorten it with at all after the first author's name. If it's a single author or two authors, you need to put everybody's name, but three or more, you can put the first author and then at all. Now in the reference list, you wanna put your, the names and initials for up to 20 authors instead of seven. So this is where they get you. They let you shorten it in text, but in, at the end of the paper, and you will find articles that have 20 authors. You wanna list them all in the reference list, up to 20. After that, you can use the at all. DOIs, the digital object identifiers, now are formatted as URLs. We'll see some examples of this as we go. And URLs are embedded directly in the reference without being perceived, without having to put retrieved from in front of them, unless there's a retrieval date that's needed. And they really want you to go more gender neutral with your pronouns when you write your paper. So they prefer, the APA style prefers that you use they, their, instead of saying he or she. Um, it's more inclusive, more inclusive language. Okay, so let's look at the references page and how authors are treated. <clears throat> Across all source types, authors are handled the same way. So no matter whether you have a book or a website or a journal article, authors are going to be treated the same way. You begin with the author's last name followed by the first initials. So last name and then first initials there. Omit any honors or distinctions. So if somebody has a PhD or um, a, a JD after their name, um, you do not use those in the listing for authors. If the person is an editor, note that. So you have the last name followed by the initials and then in parentheses, ED period. Continuing on with authors, for two and up to 20 authors, use the same information in the same order separated by commas and using an ampersand before the final name. So let's look at this. Last, first initials, ampersand, last, first initial, okay? And then here's three authors. And then if they're editors, you note that. So you put the last name and the first initials and then followed by another last name and a first initial and EDS. And not everybody's going to have a middle initial, only if they do have it, should you put it in there. For eight or more authors, name the first six, then replace most of the others with an ellipsis and the list with the last author. So you'll see here, one author, two, three, four, five, six, and then ellipsis, and then go to the 10th author. Source types. So be able to recognize each of these types of sources and how and why they differ from one another. So you may have a book 
or an online book. You could have a newspaper or an online newspaper. You could have a magazine or an online magazine. Journals are very popular or an online journal and a standard website, either a non-book or a non-periodical. All right, citing books, looking at the book citation, it requires the following information in this order. First, the authors or the editors, or if there are no authors, the organization, the date of publication, the title of the chapter or section used, the title of the book as a whole, the edition or the volume information, if applicable, the page range of the chapter or section used, the publisher, and then finally the online access information, only if it's applicable. So let's look at some book examples. You'll see here, first of all, that, that, each, that each example is alphabetized because that's what you do with APA. You alphabetize by author's last name first in your references page. And you'll also notice that there's hanging indentation. So the first line of every entry is not indented. And then the subsequent lines in each entry are um, tabbed once. Okay, and that shows the difference between one entry to the next entry. Okay, so we have Bar, R, and Eversol J. They're the editors. And followed by that is always the year of publication. Here's the title, the Fire Chief's Handbook. And you'll notice that there is no capitalization here. Um, and then <clears throat> the uh, publisher is the Fire Engineering Penwall Corporation. Okay. And the next example, we have speaking body, period, in the intimate act of choreography, pages 16 to 22, University of Pittsburgh Press, and the URL here. Notice that there's no period after the URL, and we don't put periods after URLs in APA. And then McLuhan, M, 2003, Cybernetics and Human Culture in Understanding Me. This is a chapter, lectures and interviews. And then you'll see the editors also listed. So we've got the author and the editors. And then McClellan and Stewart is the publisher and then the URL. Holly, did you wanna add something? I think this pretty much covers it, but I'm happy to pick up with okay. some journals. And okay. I do want to bring up something that my good friend Carolyn mentions to me often. I hear her tell students um, that in APA, there is no creativity. They give you a format and you plug into the format. You plug in as much information as you have. You don't make up anything. It's just a matter of using the format. So the book format, it might not look natural, but that's exactly the way they want it. So that's exactly what you, how you plug it in. Now, when you're citing journals, it's similar. You wanna have in this order, your authors or your editors or your organization, if, if it's a group, um, an entity that's, that's written the article, the date of publication, the title of the article, the title of the journal, the volume and issue information, the page range of the article, and if it was, if you got it online, then you want to put that access information. And here's some examples. The article by Bovin J was published in 2003, December of 2003. The title of the article is a review of psychosocial interventions and infertility. Notice we just capitalized the first word of that title and nothing else in there is a proper noun, so no additional capitalization. After the period there is the title of the journal, Social Science and Medicine, note the italics, and note that it's in the capitalization of the journal. That's how the journal capitalizes it, so that's what we use. The volume number is 57 and note that that is italicized also. And then you've got your page numbers. The second example by Heng from 1998 shows again, uh, article, this one's on cannibalism. Note the uh, capitalization. 
Then you get to the journal differences, the Journal of Feminist Culture Studies, and the title of the journal and the volume number 10 are all in italics, but then the issue number is number one, and you do not italicize the issue number. Even though it butts right up against the number 10, you have to stop your italicizing there. You've got your page numbers, and with this one, it was found online, so there is a URL that you put um, at the end with no punctuation at the end of the URL. The last example, educating is by LOSCO, educating nurse planners, taking continuing nursing education on the talk show circuit. This title of the article is in two parts. There's the part before the colon and the part after the colon. So you capitalize the first word of the title, educating, and the first word after the colon, taking. Then you've got your journal. Again, the journal title is in italics. And 40 is the issue of the volume number, which is in italics, but then issue nine is not. Got your page numbers. And then in this case, there is a digital object identifier, a DOI. So it's put in the format of a URL and it's put at the end of the citation with no punctuation at the end. Websites get tricky because it's often, you often find you don't have all of this information um, when you go to cite your website, but you do the best you can. So ideally, if you have all the information you need, you're gonna list your authors or editors or organization, your date of publication. If you, there is no date, you would put N period, D period. The title of the page or the article that that is the website. If there's a larger, if this is one page of a larger website, then you would want to put the name of the larger document, the full report, if it's applicable. And then the online access information. Let's take a quick look at how that would look. Oh, actually, before we get to um, examples, what since websites are a little funky, we do want to mention um, as we said, that they don't always have the level of detail that a journal article has. So there will be times when you may not have all the information. If there's no author and no organization, no nobody you can put as the author, you start the citation with the next non-date piece of information, which would be the title. So you start with, you just basically skip to the next piece of information, but you never start with a date. Okay. And just trying to go through this again, just, just so it makes sense. You, this is the order of things, but if there is no author or editor, you just don't include it because you don't have it. If there is no date, you would put ND. But if there's no author or editor, you skip the date, you start with the title of the paper and then put the date right after that and then continue on. Okay, citing websites. So citing without an author or organization, go to the title of the page or article used and then the date of publication or ND if none title of report or larger document if it's applicable, and then the online access information, how to find the website. I also like to add that there are a lot of rules here, Holly, um, a lot of rules. And even Holly and I don't know all of the rules and we have to look things up quite often and do. Um, so don't feel bad if you're not catching all of these rules. Um, they're not meant to be memorized. They're meant to, to look at as a guide and you can look up the information as you go along and you're doing your own citations. Absolutely. And I, I'll mention that at the end of every term, that's the number one question we're getting in the library that last week or so of each term is, you know, I, ha I have to cite a website, but it doesn't have, you know, an author and what do I do? And we have the manual at our elbow. The librarians are happy to help you with this. Uh, the team at the Writing Center is as well. So it's really, if you have doubts, it's best to ask. Absolutely. Always ask. So let's look at some website examples. 
In the first example, <clears throat> we have the author's last name, Mickey Rira, followed by the first two initials, T and H, followed by no date. So there was not a date on this website. The title, Physical, Mental, and Moral Effects of Marijuana, colon, notice that the T is capitalized becomes, because it comes after the colon. The Indian, a proper noun, hemp drugs commission report. In Schaefer Library of Drug Policy. And then finally, the website with no period. The next example, National Confectioners Association. That is instead of one person, this is a group or an association that is the publisher of this um, website. And <clears throat> it was made in 2014 of April, State of the Industry. And there is the URL. And then finally, plagiarism prevention, no date and the URL. So that doesn't give us too much information, but just enough that we should be able to get to where this um, summary is on the website. And without a date and without an author, the, um, the citation looks, um, has just the right amount of information that it can provide. And that should be enough. So we keep going back to the rules, chapters, articles, or web page titles and subtitles. Don't use quotation marks. That's something you might have learned if you've used MLA in the past, but quotation marks are not used in APA. And they do use their own style of capitalization where you capitalize the first word of the title, if it's a chapter or an article or a web page. Uh, capitalize just the first word, proper nouns, and if there's punctuation, the first word after the punctuation. Book titles, you italicize, and a, you, you capitalize the first word and proper nouns only, just like with the chapters or the articles. The, the one that falls outside of it is the journal titles. You do use italics in a journal title and the volume number of that journal. But the capitalization is exactly as the journal lists themselves. So you use whatever capitalization they give you. So let's talk a little bit about the references page. The references page is the last page of your paper and it lists in detail each source <clears throat> that you've cited within your paper. It doesn't list sources that you consulted but didn't cite, only the sources that you've cited, okay? So these citations, once put together, go on a fresh page at the end of the project. So they go on their own page after the paper's done. You start with the word references and centered or reference for only one source. <clears throat> when you use the word references centered in your page, it's going to be 12 point type um, either Times New Roman or, or Arial or something close to that. And it will not be in bold, it will not be underlined, and it will not be italics, and it will not be 16 point type. It will just be 12 point type, regular, centered on the page. List all citations in alphabetical order by the first word. So that's usually an author's last name. But let's say you had that citation that was called plagiarism prevention, and that's not an author but that's the title of the website, so <clears throat> of the section in the website. So you would alphabetize it by P, plagiarism, okay? And again, use hanging indentation for each citation, which we've talked about earlier in the presentation. That's when the first line is not indented and the subsequent lines in each entry are indented five spaces or a tab. In-text citation is just as important as your references page. It's not enough just to cite at the end of your paper. You have to cite in your paper as you are either taking direct quotes or paraphrases. You have to cite after each sentence. That's a common mistake that's, that students make. Um, it's not a matter of citing at the end of the paragraph. You have to cite at the end of each sentence that you use that you've taken somebody else's ideas, thoughts, words, or intellectual property. 
any of those things has to be cited, okay? So just note that in-text citation cannot be placed at the end of a paragraph to credit the whole or various parts of the paragraph. Again, it has to be placed sentence by sentence. And um, I think that's it on the slide. Okay, APA in-text citation involves three key pieces of information. One, the first element of the citation, which is often the author's last name, and we'll show you that in a second. Two, the year of the source. And three, the specific page of the source the information came from. So if we're looking at these first element examples again, you can see the first, the first entry is by the author's last name, followed by an organization, followed by a section of a website. Next, in-text citation, authors. When the first element is the author, check the number of authors. So if you have one or two authors, state the last names every time. If you have three to 19, state the last names of all the authors the first time. And then the second, third, and fourth time, you can state the, the first author's last name and replace all remaining with et al. If you have 20 plus authors, state the author's first author's last name and replace all remaining with et al every time. When the first, uh, when you're talking about an organization, then you wanna put your first element as the organization's name and it should be stated fully the first time, um, the World Health Organization. If the source will be used several times, then you could put it in brackets so that you could use a shortened form WHO in future iterations. Here we have an example with the American Heart Association. The first time you use that in-text citation, spell it all out and then put the acronym, the abbreviated version there in brackets. Then in subsequent citations, if you're using the same source, your in-text citation can say just AHA. With titles, the, uh, when the first element of your in-text citation is the source title, you don't have an author, so you start with the title. Use a shortened form of the title, but enough so that it's clear if you were to refer back to the reference list, you would be able to easily get to it. You want to capitalize all the keywords. So this is breaking that type, that funny case that APA has come up with. You want to do title case when you have it in an in-text citation. And then you want to format the title, um, use quotes for a short work like an article and italics if it's a longer work like a report. You need to include the year of the source if there is no publication date, you can use N period, D period. And sometimes you want to incorporate some of that information about your source in your actual writing. We call that signal phrases. It's just kind of, um, it's, it makes your writing more interesting when you're referring to perhaps the researcher that you're citing. Um, it's the first element in the sentence, um, and it's, it's included grammatically in the wording. So if you were going to cite, we saw um, a citation earlier by Hang, if you wanted to actually put in your text according to Hang, then you would just put the date right after where you've put his name or her name or their name. The study found, and then at the end of that sentence, you would put the page number. Here's an example with the American Heart Association found. So you would put the American Heart Association. You don't have to repeat that in the in-text citation because it's part of your text, but you do want to include the year right after the author, the organization, and put the page number at the end of that sentence. 
And this would prevent you from having an entire paper with the author's last name and the year and the page number at the end of every single sentence. And that would get that would get a little bit boring to read. So this gives a little sentence variety for you in your paper. And if you are doing a literature review where you are, you do want to analyze works and talk about what different researchers found, it, it really is a lot um, clearer than, than citing them within your, mentioning them in your text and then having to repeat that all at the end. So there we have <clears throat> in-text citation, the end style. So end of sentence style places all information at the end separated by commas. So this is what we were just talking about. This is what you wanna try to avoid. This is one way for sure that you can use in-text citation, but don't make it the only way if you can help it. The study found blank, 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 hang 1998 p period 150 notice that it's just a p period it's not pp period it's not pg period it's not nothing but it's a p period there and that's how you do in-text citations um, these findings show american heart association 2010 page 13. okay these styles are not combined if the first element appears in the sentence it's not placed again at the end okay so you don't need it twice. So here's yeah. some. Oh, you go, Carolyn. OK, I'll take this one. Um, here are some suggestions for you. Citations should happen during the research process. And Holly and I say this very seriously because um, we've worked with students before. And I share the story that when I was an undergraduate, <clears throat> I was working on a big paper. And I was kind of in a hurry to get the paper done. I wanted to write it all out because I was on a roll. And I said to myself, okay, I'll just do the, all the citations at the end of the paper. So when I went back to put the citations in, I couldn't find where I got some of the quotes or some of the paraphrases from. I couldn't find one of the sources I thought I had used and it was a big mess. But if you're, if you're organized during the, the research process and you um, go, you know, use a Word document to, to keep all of your sources intact, or you even go, um, you know, there's online ways you can do that, or you even keep things in a notebook or you keep things on note cards, whatever system works for you. Holly and I strongly urge you to keep organized during the research process because it's going to save you time in the end and it's also going to prevent you from making unintentional plagiarism mistakes that you don't want to make on your paper. Writers may be tempted to wait to cite until the end of the project, but all this can lead to more work and accidental plagiarism. I couldn't have said it better myself. Cite as you research and remember to make your reference citation before attempting in-text citation. So get all of the information for that reference before you do in-text citation so that you have it down and it's, it's right near where you're working. Remember, every sentence that contains an idea from a source must include in-text citation. So you have to cite every single time. A citation at the end of the paper or a citation at the end of a paragraph does not properly credit an idea. And we've thrown a lot of information at you. And as Carolyn said, there are so many rules that questions will come up. So we wanna make sure that you have the resources you need to know who to turn to, where do you go when you do have those questions. The, um, the Writing Center and the Online Writing Center have great information. I highly recommend them. You'll find lots of information on the library's website. If you click on the Contact a Librarian button, you'll see all the different ways you can reach out to a librarian. And the library has, uh, I'm sorry, the APA um, style website uh, that on the American Psychological Association's website is super helpful as well. And we've also mentioned OWL, the online writing lab at Purdue University. You can Google it, you'll find it. Um, great examples of APA um, sample papers. Uh, and, you know, reach out if these resources between the manual and these resources available online, if they don't answer your question, contact us and ask. 
And can I add a couple of things, Holly? Please do. Um, a couple of plugs. One for the librarians who are amazing. Um, first of all, there are subject librarians who are experts in the subject that you're writing on who can give you further guidance. And you have a 24 seven chat option so that if you're working on something at two in the morning and you have a question about a citation, you can type it in the library chat on the library website and they will get back with you right away and give you the information you're looking for. Wow, that's really amazing. And the online writing center and the writing center, um, both of the academic resource center will gladly um, read your papers and respond to them and look at your citations and see where you might have made some um, errors and where you are in good shape and give you feedback there that's so important before you turn in a paper. So you have a lot of different resources available to you from Webster to help you on your um, paper and citation journey. We want to thank you for your time and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.